It's the winter time, and for baseball, that means the annual period where Japanese players are posted from the NPB to try and secure a contract in Major League Baseball. Recently, we talked about Kodai Senga, but he's an unrestricted international free agent, meaning he's not subject to the posting system. A posting implies that a player only has a 30-day signing period before having to return to their respective league if they don't get a contract. This was the case last year for Seiya Suzuki, who drew in quite the sweepstakes during his month-long frenzy, turning that competition into a five-year, $85 million deal with the Chicago Cubs. He was pretty good last year, and I believe this year's posting prize could be similarly effective in MLB, maybe even better. His name is Masataka Yoshida, and we should get to know him. Because he just signed the largest MLB contract ever for a Japanese player. His brand new five-year, $90 million contract with the Boston Red Sox breaks the record deal that Seiya Suzuki set just a year ago. Plus, with the additional posting fee for the Oryx Buffaloes, his team in Japan, That'll take the total cost of this deal for the Red Sox up to nine figures. So, is Masataka Yoshida truly an $100 million player? Can he live up to this hype? Well, his track record certainly suggests he can. Let's dive in. Yoshida came into the league with the Oryx Buffaloes back in 2016 and played in just part of the season in his first two years in the league. He demonstrated a prowess for plate discipline, while also still slugging at a near 500 clip despite not clubbing insane amounts of home runs. He profiled as a baseball purist's dream a low strikeout contact specialist who could hit to all fields and had an above average eye at the plate. This would only be elevated when he finally began playing in a full schedule stretch for the Buffaloes in 2018 and onward. Since 2018, Yoshida has played in at least 110 games cumulatively between the Western and Pacific League every single year. In each of these five seasons since 2018, he has managed a batting average over 320, an on-base percentage over 400, a slugging percentage over 510, and in four of the five seasons, he still managed over 20 home runs. He's averaged an OPS near 1,000 over a five-year stretch, and that's really hard to do no matter where you play. Add in over 130 doubles and over 110 home runs in this five-year stretch, and you've got one of the best players in Japan right now, the face of the Oryx Buffaloes. What I find truly special is that in every season except 2018, Yoshida has walked more than he has struck out. As I mentioned a lot in my Seiya Suzuki video last season, one of the most transferable skills from Japanese baseball to MLB is plate discipline. So let's focus on that bit for a second. In the 2020 season, Yoshida had maybe the best strikeout to walk ratio I've seen on a baseball reference page maybe ever. He walked 72 times with just 29 strikeouts, meaning he drew two and a half walks for every strikeout at the plate. Let's take Juan Soto, for example, the hitter with definitively the best batter's eye in baseball right now. He had a ratio of 1.41 last season, which led MLB and was really good, but it was over a full walk on average less than Yoshida. Obviously, it's different leagues, but that's a pretty insane disparity. Yoshida's most recent season, which has effectively become a contract year, was by far his most impressive statistically. As a 28-year-old in the NPB, Yoshida achieved his first full season with an OPS above 1,000, walking 40 more times than he struck out, and led the Buffaloes to a first-place finish in the Pacific League after spending two consecutive seasons in the basement. His team would go on to win the Japan Series, the first of Yoshida's career, providing him some of that October baseball feel over in Japan. On the year, it was over 500 plate appearances, 28 doubles, 21 home runs, a staggeringly high batting average, and of course, that OPS that we love talking about. Let's dissect Yoshida's profile specifically with his most recent numbers in mind, because this is likely the product you're going to see in MLB next season if he signs. Yoshida struck out just 8% of the time in 2022 with just 42 strikeouts and 515 plate appearances. Of qualified hitters in MLB in 2022, only Luis Arias managed a lower strikeout percentage over a full season with his 7.1% clip. Obviously, the standards for these two leagues are different. I'm going to keep reiterating that, but having a good eye is an important skill to have regardless of where you play. His 5'8 frame has drawn some comparisons to Dustin Pedroia as a hitter, a player who had a career 9.7 strikeout percentage while also hitting 300 routinely. Unsurprisingly, his 447 on-base percentage from last year was good for first in the Pacific League in 2022 among all qualified hitters. He managed to walk 82 times in 2022, a 15.9% clip, which also led the Pacific League. Moreover, Yoshida only struck out 42 times in 515 plate appearances in 2022, and his 2.39 walk-to-strikeout ratio ranked first in the Pacific League as well. There's probably only one caveat to Yoshida's game, and that's his defensive shortcomings. He's not a bad defender by any means, but he doesn't fill the same impressive outfielder profile that Seiya Suzuki did last season. While Suzuki had a cannon and pretty good athleticism, Yoshida has a league average arm and that aforementioned small frame. He doesn't project well as a center fielder. He likely won't even be an effective right 
outfielder because of his arm's limitations, meaning whoever signs him will likely be playing him as an everyday left fielder. This might be a scary proposition being that left field is a position that almost always warrants a great hitter, but there are plenty of left fielders who aren't built and stocky in frame and specialize in contact and getting on base, but overall Yoshida is a two-time NPB batting champion from 2020 and 2021, a four-time Best 9 and All-Star recipient, a Japan Series champion, and oh, just for fun, let's throw in a home run derby victory as well. Yoshida could truly be the real deal. He's two years older than Suzuki's age when he signed and has a shorter track record than most overseas stars that have come to MLB. But it's worth noting that Yoshida is a massive Bryce Harper fan. He originally wore the number 34 because of Bryce Harper, and the first two letters of his Instagram handle are BH. I expect Yoshida to be a fan favorite. He works fantastic at bats, rarely has a bad swing, still provides pop and decent speed, and is exactly the kind of small, scrappy ball player that many baseball fans, including myself, love to root for. So you may notice that my voice may sound a little different now, and that's because this video was originally recorded on the morning of December 7th, about 12 hours before Yoshida signed. Yeah, this part of the video was originally about his market value and the teams that I thought would go after him, and obviously that stuff doesn't matter anymore because he signed way sooner than anybody expected. So let's talk about the pros and cons of this record-setting deal. First, the good things. We previously mentioned his shortcomings as a defender, but Fenway Park's shallow left field is a match made in heaven for Yoshida. For his limitations in range and getting a good jump on the ball, smaller left fields were always going to be favorable for him. Second, Boston's 7.8 team walk percentage last year ranked 18th in MLB, and Yoshida will provide a necessary boost on their on-base numbers there. Third, Baseball America's scouting report on Yoshida provides a favorable outlook on him as the prospective leadoff guy for Boston. In their report, they say he has a quick, flat swing from the left side and consistently barrels balls with his elite hand-eye coordination. He has good rhythm and balance in the batter's box and is able to hit multiple pitch types, including the high-velocity fastballs he'll see in MLB. Yoshida is an aggressive hitter who attacks pitches early in counts and mostly hits hard line drives from gap to gap. Yoshida shows plus raw power in batting practice and had 320 home run seasons in Japan, but his power projects to be fringy in MLB. That power may not be a necessity for the Boston Red Sox, who slugged 409 as a team last year, ninth in MLB. Adam Jones, who played in the NPB at the end of his career alongside Yoshida, spoke very highly of him, regarding him as the Japanese Juan Soto in a quote for an article for The Athletic. Okay, let's get to the cons. This signing is a massive amount of money for a question mark guy. He doesn't really help Boston in certain areas. For example, they stole 52 bases as a whole team last year, 26th in MLB, and Yoshida certainly isn't a threat in that category with less than 50 stolen bases on his career. Fangraphs also valued Boston as a bottom 10 defensive team last season, and Yoshida will be limited to one position in the outfield and isn't regarded as spectacular at playing that position either. With recent news of Xander Bogart's departure for San Diego, Boston will either need to add more supplementary pieces or have some of their prospects ball out, because without either of those things happening, Yoshida will bear even more pressure to perform in his de facto rookie MLB season. Red Sox fans, please step away from the ledge. I know, Xander was a fan favorite, but you still have Devers. You know, you got, you got Verdugo. You guys signed Kenley Jansen. Yeah. It's kind of bad over there. With all that being said though, I'm very excited for this signing. It feels like we're seeing more and more Japanese players wanting to take the challenge and cross over to MLB year after year. And if all goes according to plan, Yoshida could have one of the sweetest swings in MLB. Also, Masataka kind of has his own little Juan Soto shuffle, which I kind of love. Boston is making a massive bet on him, and I hope it pays off. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this mini deep dive on Yoshida, and if I miss anything, leave a comment down below. And make sure to like the video if you learned something. And if you're a Boston fan looking to see Yoshida in action next season, you gotta go to SeatGeek to get your tickets now, the sponsor of today's video. We all miss baseball season a lot, so I don't blame you if you're already itching to buy tickets to go see your favorite team next season. And if you don't know where to go to get the best price, I've got the hookup. You wanna go to SeatGeek and use their awesome app. Whether it's for concerts, baseball, football, festivals, or more, SeatGeek puts tickets from all over the web in one place to make buying simple. They wanna make sure you're getting a good deal, so look for the green dots. Green means a good deal and red means bad. And right now, if you use their app or click the link in my description and use code JOLLY, you can get $20 off your first order at SeatGeek. Again, click the link in my description or download the app and use promo code JOLLY to use the sweet deal today and maybe go see Yoshida next season. He's going to have plenty of fans. Why don't you be one of them? Thank you to SeatGeek for sponsoring today's video, and I will see you guys next time.